Hello, f friends and brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, this It's still Sunday, January 12, 5.14 p.m. I've been giving this um, the Bethel Church video and all that kind of thing a lot of thought. Uh, how badly Satan has not wanted us to hear good teaching on the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want people baptized in the Holy Spirit. He's doing everything in his power to turn these uh, what was a good church into this New Age, going to the New Age movement, or, uh, you know, they're... This, just using Bethel for an example, found out um, from one of y'all, they have a red tower that's like a pyramid, and it goes red, and I'm like, what in the world? You know, but churches have steeples, and those supposedly come from uh, paganism. You know, like the Washington Monument, they call it a phallic symbol. That's what steeples are supposedly. Well, anyway, the whole point is how sad it is that Satan has basically destroyed the good in every good church. I'll bet he doesn't have to hang out in a whole lot of those dead churches that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They believe in once saved, always saved. They're the Baptists. That's where that comes from. And there are, I'm sure, other denominations that have picked up on it and teach it also, but I don't know who they were. I don't know what every denomination teaches. I guess I'm just um, sharing my thoughts here about how sad it is. Look how hard Satan has had to work starting way back when the churches first started after Martin Luther pinned his thesis to the church door and Protestantism started. <clears throat> okay. Well. You first had your Lutherans. And then. Somebody else broke off. I don't know. I haven't researched the order of who broke off who. But you know there's 30,000 denominations in America alone. Now, that's what I read in an article. That's what I've been telling people. I don't care if it's only 1,000. I don't care if it's 100. That's too many. I mean, why? It's because the preacher and maybe the assistant preacher start to disagree on what a certain passage means. And some will follow this man and some will like this one better and the church splits. So the one that leaves and takes some of the members with him, they call theirs like... Um, The Reformed Baptist Church. We'll just say that. There's one of them. That's one of them. And then there's the Missionary Baptist. There's the Southern Baptist. Then there's just Plain Old Baptist. And it might be uh, the First Baptist Church of, let's say, uh, name a city, Akron. Okay, First Baptist Church, Akron. Because it's the first one formed. 
And then you might have 32nd Street Baptist Church because it formed on, on its address is 32nd Street. Well, see, but <clears throat> my point is there's way, way too many. There's way too many and why. There should be just one, but there isn't, and there's not going to be, because Jesus himself said, You think I've come to bring peace? Nay, I say, I've come to bring division. For from now on, that means when he lived, from now on, there will be five in one house, three against two, and two against three. Because maybe two are going to believe in him, that he is the Savior and three are going to stay Jewish. Back then, that would have been the argument. But as time went on and you got Catholicism going, and then you've got the split off in Protestantism, and then you started getting all these different denominations, you're going to have the mother believing how they've been believing and the children say, no, I think this other way is right. And so then you got mother against daughter and daughter against mother. It's been going on for years. What's going on now, I think, is probably worse and for different reasons. But... um like I said, I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm sad. I'm sad that Satan has been so cunning to distort the teachings about the Holy Spirit. Not just in the Baptist church, teaching the Jesuits taught the students in the seminary once saved, always saved. The gifts of the Holy Spirit died out with the apostles. There's no more need for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all that kind of stuff. They don't teach it. So, who's the liar? It's Satan and the Jesuits, the teachers. But then look, look how prominent that one kind of denomination is. And then you've got a whole lot of Catholicism up north. And you know they have their own set of rules. They sure don't teach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some groups will form. They call them charismatic Catholics. And they somehow that was going on back when we were still in the in the Catholic Church. My mom went to one of the ladies meetings and they laid hands on her and tried to uh, she wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit and they were trying to make her pray in tongues telling her now just let your tongue let your mouth go loose and start going la 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 it'll just come out. Well it didn't happen for her that way and she never did get it. But she wanted it. But they, they, they distorted it. And don't you know word about that got out. You can't force anybody to, to want it or to do it. It's got to be from the Holy Spirit, from within. So many churches, different denominations have distorted that. Or just shuffled it right out the door and don't teach about it at all. And I just find that so sad. And I know I'm probably preaching to the choir here. But I hope that if any of you are new and have come out of one of those kind of churches, that you will know that we need the powers of the Holy Spirit. And Satan's done his darndest to keep it out of the church. And these churches that are preaching it, where you could go, you could end up with a demon in you instead of the Holy Spirit. 
My goodness, that vi one video somebody linked in a comment, I watched it and they was praying for that young man and he was, he was not praying in tongues, he was laying on the ground writhing and screaming like he was on fire. I mean, the Lord doesn't hurt us when we get filled with the Spirit. That was not the Holy Spirit he got. That young man got a demon. And he got fire all right. But he didn't get the Holy Spirit fire. Now what is he going to do? He could go home and thinking he's got filled with the Holy Spirit. That is such a shame. It makes me very sad to think that's going on. And that's why the Holy Spirit, I mean, it's Satan's bug back and all that. He's just letting him preach half the time good stuff so people will come and listen to him more and more. And then you might even go try to go there and go down to the altar to get filled. And look what happens. Oh, Jesus. I know you're grieved far more than I am. I know you are. Tell us how. How can new believers get filled with the Spirit? You pray for it. All you have to do is ask. And it is harder when you're doing it on your own. You don't know who to trust to lay hands on you. Don't be quick to let anybody lay hands on you. Now I know that message. There's a scripture that says, Do not be quick to lay hands on somebody. And that's talking about when you're anointing them to be in service for the church. Don't be quick to let some new believer be a deacon. Don't be quick to put a, a office on them, the office of a deacon or the office of a um, whatever different kind of offices they had. Because it'll, it said that it'll puff them up and the pride might make them fall, see? So you want a mature person to do, uh, have the office of apostle or um, <clears throat> assistant pastor or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's what it meant. But still, for us today, we cannot be quick to let just anybody lay hands on us. You have to pursue the Holy Spirit on your own, basically. And that's really sad to say. I would not tell you to, oh, go find your local Assemblies of God church and go down front and let them lay hands on you. Never again would I do that. And I used to. It's just really sad that it's a fact. And these conferences that these churches have where you can go get delivered and then filled, you may come out with a demon. It is the end. The Lord knows it. He knows what's going on. And I'm sure he's grieved. And he has mercy, of course. And I don't believe for a minute that if that happens to you, If that happens to someone that doesn't know any better, they go there thinking they're going to get filled or they're going to get a gift because they want to get closer to the Lord, that His grace is going to cover whatever they do because of it. See, there again, see, look how the lighting, this. I put the lights on over here in front of me. Two little light ones behind me and left this one beside me off. And it's still wanting to do that weird stuff. 
I guess it's just my computer. Anyway, let me know what you think. I'm just spouting off and I, and because I'm sad about it. I'm so sad that there's no church I can tell somebody to go look at. Go go listen to him. Go listen to her. They'll help you get filled with the Spirit. Does anybody know of one? Please tell us. Tell us if you know of one source that you would say for sure has none of this weird stuff going on half the time. Something that looks like tarot cards, really? That's what is at Bethel Church. I forget what the, which one of you put it in the comments, what you said about it. I th this, is, this is so crazy. And it's supposed to help them learn how to deal with people who are into tarot cards. Is it, I think that's what they said. I'm like, good grief. We're to come out of the world, not be like the world. Not make some substitution that's just like what they got. Anyway, I'm in the, I'm done. I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this. I hope it helps somebody. You can go ahead and rant too. Put it in your put it in the comments. Tell me what you're grieved about. Okay, you can do that. It's all right. All right. So I'll plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you this video, our computers, and our internet connections. Wow, it's weird. <laughs> Maybe my angels are flying around. With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.